Good day, everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful afternoon. Great times in the world of golf. Things are happening. I wanted us to look at something that I heard last night when watching a golf channel. PGA Tour is in Mexico, Cabo, playing a Diamante, and they were doing interviews with the players. Wesley Bryan said something I want us to listen to. And then we'll dive in. I want to get your thoughts. Uh, by the way, oh, uh, Seven Diamonds having a great sale, like 30% off for 30 days. So link in the video description below. Get whatever you want. Men, women, gifts, whatever you got. Link below. Great stuff. I wear it all the time, obviously. So uh, let's dive in. All right. So Kira K. Dixon was asked, getting players uh, input, advice, input, not advice, but input from what the PGA Tour is doing in terms of changes for the 2026 season. Not now, but in a year. So these kind of things take a while. But one of the main changes was the fact that they're going to limit tour cards from like 125 to 100. A lot of players are kind of taking kind of the political stance on this and just playing middle of the road. Kevin Streelman said some great things and just how uh, they're, they're trying to make it better for everybody. And uh, I think Keith Mitchell was saying that the tour in the past has overpromised and underdelivered on those tour cards. In, in meaning this is that they, they have a lot of tour players with tour cards, but the newer players, they don't get in events. So you might have your tour card. It doesn't mean you're in events. What they do is they shuffle priority. So in this, these tournaments, these certain players have priority to get in and then they reshuffle the new player pool or the players that don't have as high a priority. And then those players get priority into these events. So in other words, if you have a tour card and you're newer, you really can't pick your schedule. You don't know what events you're going to be in. So let's say you are, you grew up in the West Coast and you know West Coast courses and you play well there. Well, you might not get in any West Coast events. You might be East Coast and then it's really difficult. And then you bounce and you lose your card and you got to come back and it's, it's just a hassle. And you might not make any money because you're not in the right events or you might not be playing well at the time. So you want to take a break. You just can't choose your schedule. So what they want to do is limit the number of uh, people in the tournaments so that you can get in all the events that you want to get in. And then there you go. So some players like it. Some players don't. They're going around. Here's what Wesley Bryan had to say regarding that. So let's take a listen to his answer right here. We have elected uh, players from this tour to make those type of decisions. And I, I'm completely fine putting my trust in their hands. Um, and, and I also understand where I'm at on the totem pole. Um, we have guys uh, that are out here trying to do what's best for the tour. Um, and what's been a really weird time over the last couple of years. And, um, and, and the, the fact that the people are getting upset over or the Monday qualifiers or uh, those last few spots in the fields, um, I don't quite understand it because I've seen, or what I, I, I personally believe is that there's five, six, seven guys that are out here that, that make the tour money that people want to tune in to watch. And, and there's hundreds of guys out here that, and I fall into that category uh, of people that just don't always put the most exciting product on the golf course. Um, so like you've got your Rory McIlroy's and Xander and, and Spieth and Scotty Scheffler, like those are guys that are driving this product. Um, and as long as those guys are willing to tee it up, I feel like there's people that are going to be willing to watch and um, trying to get all upset over, over leaving guys like me out of the field. I, again, from the YouTube side, I, I enjoy that probably more than I do the PGA tour now these days. And uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind, getting kicked off this tour based on performance. What did he say? I wouldn't mind getting kicked off this tour based on performance. I wouldn't mind. And that he enjoys the YouTube side more than the PGA tour side. That's interesting. I, my thought, I've got a lot of thoughts on it, a number of thoughts. I want your thoughts on this. What do you think about that? Put in the comment below. I read all the comments, by the way. I might not reply to all, all of them, but I, I read them all. I tried to. Um, 
He enjoys the YouTube side more than the PGA Tour side. I wonder what the PGA Tour thinks of that. Like, oh, is that good or is that bad? Or they embrace that? Or do they call him up and say, dude, come on, you can't, don't do that. Don't do that to us. I think it reveals a lot in terms of what, you know, the PGA Tour is. It's a grind. It's really a grind. And you've got to love, you have to love the practice, the alone solitude, the loneliness that it requires to be great at the game of golf at the highest level. You have to love eight hour days practicing. And when you're having so much fun, part of the reason you love it is because you love to play golf. Now, then Wesley and George do their channel and they're collaborating with a lot of people and they're having a ton of fun playing the game they love, more fun than the grind with less loneliness, less time just beating ball hour after hour after hour. So he loves it way more. It's interesting because I run into a lot of people and I see these kids and I always ask them like, what do you want to do? Do you want to play college golf? They're like, yeah, I want to play college golf, which I don't blame you. It's a heck of a lot of fun. Then I say, well, what do you want to do after that? And they're like, well, I want to play professionally. And then I followed up, well, where? What tour do you want to play on? PGA Tour or Live Tour? They always say PGA Tour. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, fair enough. Like, you don't want to be on the Live Tour. They're like, no, nah, no, nah, I want to be on the PGA Tour. And I say, okay. I say, what about YouTube golf? And they're like, you know what? If it doesn't work out on the PGA Tour, then yeah, I'd love to do that. So that's kind of like, I want to be on the PGA Tour. And if that doesn't work out, I want to be a YouTuber. So... The thing is, once you get on the PGA Tour, according to Wesley, then it might it, it is more fun for him on the YouTube side of things. What are your thoughts? I know everybody's little kid dream is to make it on the highest level, win these great championships. But if you're not at that level, then it's interesting with the direction YouTube golf is headed. The question, another question to have is this is, how much money can you make YouTube versus the PGA Tour? Like, would he prefer to be YouTube because it's more money? Versus now, if you're winning, if you're Rory and Bryson and those guys, yeah, it's a different level of income right there. But if you're where he is on the money list, 138 or whatever he is below that threshold, how much you making versus how much you're making on YouTube? Now, YouTube... AdSense alone, it's, yeah, night and day. PGA Tour is going to be better. But they're getting about 3 million views a month on their YouTube channel. So you got to understand the how much are they bringing in from that. AdSense is going to be one level. Again, it's and he's splitting it with his brother, right? So let's say they're 50-50 in on that. 3 million in the YouTube golf space is... Pretty good compared to other niches on YouTube. Golf pays higher for YouTube AdSense. But that's not the only revenue source they have. They're going to have their rowback clothing. They probably get a paycheck from rowback and they get affiliate commission. So every time you buy seven diamonds, yeah, I get a commission from what you purchase. So I give you a discount and I get a commission on the sale of it. And it varies depending on how much discount you get. Right now you're getting 30% seven diamonds, so I get very little. And when it goes back to your 15%, then I get more. So I'm giving you my discount basically, or my affiliate, you're getting that instead of me for the next 30 days. So um, that's how that kind of works. Then they're, they have uh, Tacoma irons, Tacoma irons. So they're gonna get paid for that. They could have an, an affiliate commission versus maybe just a flat fee. Same is going to go with Lab Golf. I would imagine Lab Golf is probably paying them a fair amount of money to split. So you're looking at just determine 3 million views a month, seeing your Lab putter, what's that worth to Lab? You tell me, what what is that worth to you? 3 million views, you see the guy making putts with the Lab putter, two of you guys, Wesley and George, how much are you going to pay them for that per year? Same with the Tacoma Irons. 
the Olakai shoes and the Roback clothing. How much do you think they're getting per, just put it like labs paying $50,000 a year that whatever you think it is. And then they split it 50, 50. So they could be doing quite well. And probably my guess is that the money Wesley's bringing in on the PGA tour, he, you know, he's not winning. He made a cut last time out at the black desert just awesome in an awesome way. Loved it. So, but you know, he's not bringing in millions of dollars. He's bringing in thousands of tens of thousands of dollars versus what he's potentially, what they are making on the YouTube side of it, more fun, having fun. So, and I think it's more, uh, sustainable on the YouTube side of things and more just steady. So you can just bank on it every month and grow growing and they have their brand, the Brian bros brand. So they're building something, they own something versus the grind. I think it was a very insightful thing that Wesley gave us a little nugget saying, Hey, I'm gonna be doing YouTube. That's my first love. What are your thoughts? I think it's interesting that that's the direction people are going. And I think more players who have that kind of personality to drive something are going to start looking at that and say, Hmm, if I'm not in the 120, 100 tour card guys, maybe we go a different route and grow something in the YouTube land. That's where I think this is headed. That's why I think it's interesting. Love to hear your thoughts. See you soon.